The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel as written to us by John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and we will make our dwelling place with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am still with you. Now the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything. She will remind you of all that I told you. It is peace that I leave with you. It is peace that I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give peace. So don't let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You have heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back. If you love me, you will rejoice that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now that I have told you this, even before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe. This is good news from the Lord. I'm told by others smarter than I that religion has four major movements or stages. I'm going to name them quickly and then we'll try to illustrate them in these, uh, I think, somewhat appropriate readings. It's called the first stage, cleaning up. Most people don't even get that far, but a lot do. Second stage is growing up. Some people grow up, but a lot remain forever spiritual children. The third stage is waking up, and that's even more rare. That's when you overcome your sense of separation between yourself and God, between yourself and your neighbor, between yourself and yourself. And finally, there's showing up, where you say, it's time that I give back to the world. I can't just keep taking, I have to give. So, cleaning up, growing up, waking up, showing up. Now what we see in this first reading is a marvelous example of religion as merely cleaning up. So some in the early centuries, I guess you know, among our Jewish ancestors, the, uh, the rite of initiation was circumcision. They only took the men seriously. If the men were circumcised, the whole family was in. Uh, and Paul comes along and says, circumcision isn't even necessary. It'd be like me saying to you, baptism isn't even necessary. And so there's quite a discussion of this. And uh, they say, okay, we're gonna have a meeting. They have a meeting and they decide, well, here are the essentials. And I think most of the essentials will really surprise you and won't seem like essentials at all. You may not, abs- you may not eat from meat sacrificed to idols. Do any of you do that? I hope not. It's a terrible thing to do. You are not to drink blood. I don't suppose you do that either. Maybe a few of you do. You're not supposed to eat meat from strangled animals. How did those become the essentials? For people who say it's always the same, it isn't. Seems every century has a new emphasis on what's wrong and what's right. And then he says, from unlawful marriage. So most of us would probably agree with that. And he says, if you keep all of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. And he leaves. 
Well, it's starter kit. And it's just cleaning up. Most religion starts with purity codes. Various things that you shall not do. And if you don't do them, you feel pure, holy, superior, saved, better than those other people. It isn't a very high level of consciousness at all. But you got to get started. If you're still stealing from your neighbor, if you're st still having sex with your neighbor's wife, or uh, so you, you haven't even cleaned up. So it's a good start. But we want to talk about growing up. How do you mature people? How do you help them to understand something beyond the externals, something beyond the words? We have some Hispanic men here who come all the way from Tennessee today. They're on the way to those initiation rites that we started, how many, 30 years ago, I guess. Hope it's a great experience. I'm sure it will be. But it's all about growing up. And I think most of us would agree that the male in our culture, forgive me, brothers, but he's not very grown up. The women are all nodding. Why is it? <laughs> that they tend to remain perpetual adolescents. There's no real interest in depth, in spirituality, in conversation beyond the weather and sports. This doesn't create for an in-depth spiritual life. And so it takes a lot of time. Most of what you should be doing between 20 and 50 is just growing up, becoming a human being, learning what it means to be human. And we look at our politics in Washington, we say, my God, this whole country is led by a bunch of teenagers. Uh, can we do better than this? Uh, apparently not. So we're not even doing the second stage very well. But I find a wonderful symbol of the second stage in the second reading. I know it's all symbolic. Maybe you didn't pay attention to all of the symbolism. But it says, the new city, Jerusalem, will descend from the heavens. And it will have 12 massive gates facing east and west and north and south. So people can come from every direction. And the temple, the holy city, can become bigger and bigger and bigger. Sometimes it looks to me like Christianity is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. I talked to two Protestant ministers this week who says, you know, they're closing more Protestant churches than they're opening. Now we're keeping open, look at you all here. But most Catholics, to be honest, aren't real excited. They just come. Uh, we hope something is growing you up when you come. We hope you're not coming out of fear of sin or hell. That's a waste of time. If you're still at that level, you're still at cleaning up. So we have the temple ever growing larger till the new Jerusalem descends from the heavens and encompasses the whole world. Then we have the gospel, which I see about waking up. Remember what I told you, waking up is when you overcome your feeling of separation. Now, usually that's achieved by suffering and love. If you've never loved anybody deeply, if you've never suffered deeply, I'm sorry to have to say it, but you probably haven't woken up, really. Uh, you just go through the motions, stay on cruise control, go to Mass every Sunday, hope the sermon isn't too long, and go back and live next week exactly like you did last week. Uh, until that wonderful waking up moment comes where you can say what Jesus is saying here, I and the Father are one. You have to say that too. The only thing that separates you from God 
is the thought that you're separate from God. If you think that, you'll operate that way. Once you know God loves you much more than you love God back, and you start letting that sink in to every level of your being, you live this life out of joy, out of gratitude, not out of obligation and duty, certainly not out of fear. And I don't have the fourth stage in any of these gospel readings, but they are there, but just not today. If that happens, when that happens, there's an urgency inside of you to give it away, to pass it on, to give to others what has been given to you. In fact, I'd go so far to say, until that comes, I have good reason to doubt that you got it. You don't got grace, love, God, until you urgently want to pass it on. You men who are going to California from here, uh, you're going to be led by a group of men who are urgently desiring to pass on what they experienced in their initiation rite. For the most part, we lost that very notion of initiation. We threw out circumcision. We made baptism just pouring a little water over your head, but never a real inner experience. So when you get the beginning right, you tend to get the ending right. And you have to tell the people of God from the very beginning it's about dying and rising, dying and rising, dying and rising, losing an understanding, losing an understanding. When you've gone through that, well, I'm 76 now. I, I hope I've gone through it a few times. But every, other t every time it gets a little more obvious. But I couldn't have known that at 22. You think it's all about commandments and laws and going to church. You know, this is going to shock some of you. Some of you, it would be better if you stopped going to church. <laughs> really, it would. And tried to love and suffer for humanity. And enter in to the love and suffering of all of humanity. Then you've gone to the real church. The church that changes you. So, how do you do that? The easiest way is to step, even this week, even this day, out of your little world. And to meet people who aren't just like you. To love people who aren't just like you. And to forgive people who don't deserve forgiveness, do you deserve forgiveness? And to hand on this endlessly abundant life that never stops giving. The only thing that separates you from God is the thought that you're separate from God.